Okay, cool. Actually, yeah, the game audio is probably still too loud. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Alrighty. I guess we're live. Okay. Cool. Uh, so this is Squid's Odyssey. If you've never seen this game before, this is a uh, turn-based RPG, so think like Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, the twist is that all of our units are squids, and the way that you move your units around the level is by grabbing your squids by the tentacles and using this like an elastic band to slingshot them around the stage. And this is also how you attack enemies. You attack enemies by literally flinging your squids into them. So it's one part Fire Emblem and one part Angry Birds, which is a combination you didn't <laughs> realize you wanted in your life until about two seconds ago. Uh, anyways, so we're going to beat it really fast. Uh, I'm playing on an iPad. This is a originally a mobile game, but it is currently available on iOS, Android, 3DS, Wii U, Switch, and as of 2018, it's available on Steam, so you can grab it on your computer. So I'm just going to reset the game here. Uh, you want to hit the button when I say go? Sure, sure, sounds good. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, I, what? I did not reset the game? Hang on, okay. Well, scratch that. <laughs> I pressed the reset button, did I not? Reset game, okay. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. It's round two. <laughs> Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, go. Okay. We're in, into level one now instead of level like 30 or whatever it was. <laughs> okay. So right off the bat, I'm going to skip my turn with the, my first two guys. Screw this up. I didn't mean to hit that chest, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So moving around here, our first combat. My movement here is very particular. I want to kill this guy on the right and leave myself in a position so that one of these two guys on the left is going to attack me. The other one will not. Uh, so it's their turn. And now everything is perfectly lined up. So I can just double bounce into this guy and he's dead. And now I'm right next to the next guy so I can double bounce into him and he's dead. And now I'm right next to the exit so I can just go to the end of the stage. Um, so you see, like, your early movement sets up your sub subsequent movement. It's sort of like we're playing pool, almost, with our units. Alright, uh, so this level is a dashing tutorial. So Steve here uh, is a scout, so he has a dash attack. So you can basically just tap the screen while he is moving, and he'll shoot forward in whatever direction he's facing. So I can grab these two chests and get out of here. I'm also passing the turn randomly because uh, to refresh my stamina and get my dashes back. Uh, we're going to knock this guy off the edge. Uh, don't think about that too hard. We're underwater. These creatures can all swim, but edges are deadly. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright, so, I'm gonna do my first menu. I remove Vaheen from my party because she's useless, and now I'm gonna level up Steve to level 7. Uh, so I'm using pearls. You get pearls in levels, and it's basically the experience and also currency in this game. Uh, so Steve is now level 7 and is really, really strong. Okay. Yep, thank you. And I'm gonna grab this chest. So I just removed Vaheen from my party, but she's still in my party. Uh, and the reason for that is because some levels are just scripted uh, to have certain party members in them. So uh, she'll disappear in like a mission or two. In the meantime though, Steve's gonna just clean this up. He's level seven now, which is actually quite uh, like over leveled for this area. So he can clean up things really nicely. So this next stage is an introduction to the four classes. Uh, do you want to go over what the classes do? Sure, sure. So yeah, so you've already, so Eric's already uh, explained the, the scout, which is uh, Steve here, the guy that he's mainly using. Uh, uh, there's also, um, uh, oh man, like <laughs> the, uh, the Clint. Clint. The one. Yes, the, what is Clint? He's a, a shooter. Uh, a shooter. Yeah. So so Clint is the the red uh, squid, uh, and essentially at the start of every turn he can. Uh, can also shoot an enemy that's 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 nearby in addition to moving. So he has uh, some extra damage that he can kind of lay out uh, right off the bat. Uh, Clint Clint will be used in a couple of missions when he's actually required, but other than that, uh, he's not at all. Uh, pretty much none of the characters other than the scouts will be used, uh, just because the scouts are strictly better. Pretty much. Um, the uh, the yellow kind of sumo wrestler guy up at the top here. Um, uh, he, he has an ability where he can basically kind of stomp and do some sort of a ground pound uh, and injure all guys around him. Uh, it's a little tricky to use since you kind of also have to click the screen and that's that's uh, how you also uh, fling yourself. So you can kind of see that big, huge radius thing when Eric's uh, when, when he's moving around. Uh, that's the ground pound thing. Uh, uh, again, that character won't particularly be used. Uh, and the last class is the, uh, um, the healer. The healer. Uh, so basically... 
Um, whenever she's flung into someone, she kind of gives them a hug, and that uh, that magically heals them. So that's uh, those are the classes. Yeah, so Winnick here is uh, buying time for the rest of our squids to escape. Uh, so I'm just going to hide in the corner. And while I do that, I will tell you my favorite Winnick facts. So Winnick here is an old and wise fatherly mentor figure towards all the other squids. Uh, you can't level him up. His level is question mark. Mysterious. All of his stats are also question mark. Uh, you can't equip anything to him. Uh, and if you think he's going to live through this entire game, well, I have news for you. <laughs> Nothing bad could possibly happen to him. Oh, he's also a multi-class character, and he's the only multi-class character in the game, so he's really, really cool. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, so story-wise, uh, uh, I, I was kind of noodling on this the other day, and it's, it's uh, probably the best way to compare this is it's... it's uh, a very weirdly timed Star Wars, if you want to picture it that way. He, this guy is kind of like Anakin, the uh, uh, Wittick guy that Eric was just discussing. And, and uh, Steve, <laughs> he goes to the dark side. <laughs> I've ruined everything. Um, yeah, and uh, and Steve, the scout here, is uh, is essentially our kind of like main hero. Uh, he's our like Luke Skywalker, if you will, here as uh, as, as he's going through this. Um, and the preferred route for transportation is turtle. Yeah, so that's this true. Is, We're uh, gonna be on this turtle a couple of times. So as you can see, my party is now only one member. It's now just Steve. I haven't added anyone else. Uh, and this is actually really good. As you can see, uh, enemies don't get turns because uh, basically during the enemy's turn. Uh, if they can't hit you in one turn's worth of movement, they will just skip their turn. So I'm just skipping my turn whenever I kill everyone and there's no enemies near me. And then I can just finish them off because Steve can move super far in one turn being a scout. Uh, so... You thought this was turn-based, but it's actually just... it's just always my turn. So those uh, those dots that surround Steve as he's as he's moving about, uh, those are essentially the energy and movement that he's got. So the the further you drag back, the more dots it consumes, and the farther he goes. Uh, and the uh, I guess if he's nearby, uh, the more damage he can potentially deal deal then. Uh, okay. Oh, he didn't he didn't fall off the edge. So it's okay. That'll work. <laughs> Uh, you, you saw at the end there a star fly out. There's a couple of items that you can get in the game. Um, so uh, one of them is a uh, a ninja star. Uh, so that was that one there. Um, uh, there's, a there's a few more. Some are more useful Yeah, there's a few more. Uh, the most useful is probably this little like margarita cocktail thing that, that, that you just saw right there. there. Uh, that refreshes all of your energy, uh, which is uh, great. Uh, so the game said the objective was defeat all enemies. That actually wasn't true. We just needed to defeat that one giant crab and that spawns the exit. The game, the game game does this repeatedly. Again, the game says defeat all enemies. Not true. We can go right to the end of the level. We don't have to defeat anything, actually, in this level. Yeah, the game is a dirty liar. <laughs> okay. So I have a red stamina bar, so I'm going to be a little careful not to fling myself off the edge. Yeah, so that little sushi thing, that makes your stamina uh, red, which uh, basically drastically increases movement. So I just spawned a secret character. That's Capono. He's a yeah. He's a secret character. He's the only optional character in the game, uh, and he's a scout. And he's super super good. All of his stats are atrociously bad. His attack, defense, and HP are all really really low. Uh, but he has a ton of stamina and a ton of dashes, so he can move super super far. Uh, so I'm gonna go and recruit him right now, and I'm gonna add him to my party. And in fact, he's just gonna replace Steve. So all the hats that I purchased for Steve earlier, I'm gonna equip to Capono. Uh, hats stack in this game, by the way. It doesn't really make much sense, but uh, if you if you equip a hat one time to a squid, it will permanently bestow its stat bonus to that squid, um, which is, is isn't broken or anything. Like that's just part of the progression in this game. But uh, hats are class specific, so I purchased a bunch of scout hats. So if I make my party entirely scouts, uh, it'll be really good. I'm kind of nervous about this thing. Oh, okay, didn't want to fling myself off the edge there. Yeah, so hats are the, the only equipable item in this game. Um, uh, and again, yeah, they're class dependent. Uh, there's a couple other items so you can... Yeah, so yeah, you've already seen the, the margarita. We kind of mentioned the sushi gives you a red stamina bar. That makes you go really, really far when you move. Uh, and then we also uh, have the ninja star. And uh, there's a... Um, I forget what the ink one is called. The smoke the, bomb. The smoke bomb, yeah. yeah. So there's a smoke bomb as well that you can get that makes you dodge uh, the next attack that, that you'd receive. Uh, and the last item is a shell, which uh, gives you Oops. Uh, immunity to, to damage. That, that's the smoke bomb there, the little purple cloud. Uh, yeah, so those are kind of the items that we're playing with. Uh, you can see he's getting super bounces here. Those are uh, super, obviously. Um, there's uh, in the bottom, um, 
uh, left-hand corner, you can see kind of the number of dashes that the character has. And, uh, and yeah, uh, Capono is has an insane amount of, of dashes. Hey, we're on the turtle again. Uh, so knock two people off with one shot there, which is a nice little thing. Capono is the uh, never appears in any of the story arcs except for the very first one where you get him, uh, and all he says is his name repeatedly. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely a lovable character. But yeah, we're just continuing merrily along. Enemies are rarely getting turns again because Capono just moves so so far. Oh, that's no good. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stand here. Hopefully, I don't get knocked off here. I might. If there's a wall in my way. Okay, we're good. <laughs> So that would have been just death at the end of the level. I would have to redo the level if uh, if I get knocked off the edge. So, Got to be careful. I think one party member has its drawbacks. Yeah. So there you go. You got, got the shells. That was that other item I was discussing before. So you'll see. Yeah, so now I can just go ham. Yeah. I'm just going to get a shell. And Boom. It makes you immune to damage when it's not your turn. Yeah. So I can just commit to that. So you'll see also whenever he does the bounce. So so a bounce basically is, is you hit the guy multiple times in the same move. Yeah. So um, so um, a movement is kind of like a, a drag and flick. So if he clicks the stream and does a, a, another a dash, uh, a dash then, uh, then that counts as still part of one move. Uh, and uh, and every time you, you do oh, a... I'm just uh, going to show off this level real quick. So this level is huge. It's filled with enemies. You're supposed to like casually go through this level with your whole party of squids and get to the end of the stage. Uh, but the objective is get to the end of the level. So I'm just going to go over here, pass the turn because there's no enemies near me, so I get my stamina back, and uh, just charge off to the end of the level. This is the other thing that scouts do really well. Yeah. Skip things. There's enemies that spawn halfway through. Whatever. See ya. <laughs> Uh, and he got a crack in there, sorry, just at the end. Yeah, right? I did. That, that is that one's uh, gonna be useful another later. item. Yeah. Uh, so in this, in the format that that that's currently being played, you can only use items that you get. You can't buy additional items other than hats. So uh, so uh, that kraken uh, has the ability when used, it turns it turns everyone's life, uh, every enemy's life down to one. Yeah, it's super uh, good. So yeah, so that is incredibly useful later in the game. But we only get two, so yeah. So he's uh, gotta be cautious okay. when he uses Ooh. them. A little nervous there. I nearly flung myself off the edge. Oh, or I did. Whoops, a doodle. Yeah, I had the red stamina bar there, so you, you fling yourself super far. But that's okay. Uh, so right here, I'm going to the left to... Okay, I, I did it correctly the first time, but there's five enemies that spawn here, and I, they didn't spawn the first time because I just like went around the spawn trigger. Shirk in there is bad. It wastes time, but that's fine. I'm going to skip the turn because I have a red shell. So the red shell makes you immune to damage. The problem is if you pick up a smoke bomb, it overwrites the red shell. Hmm. Uh, so that's why I just like ended my turn there, even though I had stamina, because I was going to hit a bunch of more power-ups, and I might have gotten a uh, smoke bomb, which would have been bad. Okay, take two. Again with the superpower. The red. You usually do in this stage, but anyways. Uh, okay. I was trying to ricochet off the wall into the exit, but that's fine. So we're rescuing this uh, lady here. That's uh, Venus. She's a healer. We're never going to use her. <laughs> Except yeah, uh, so all the all the female characters in this game uh, have names that start with a V. Yeah, it's true. Um, Vahine, Vesper, and uh, Venus, yeah. and Jane. <laughs> Duh, Jane. Uh, all right, again, I'm just trying to get to the end of the stage, and these power ups aren't cooperating. I really okay, that's a sushi. That's good. Uh, I really need some stamina or something in this stage. Oh, that fish is gonna just murder that guy. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> So those yellow fish, they can hit you as well. Uh, they don't move when you're not looking at them, though. So when they get off screen, they just sort of freeze, which is kind of weird. Not a huge deal. Uh, okay. So all of these... Uh, so, so the main story plot here is essentially uh, that there's this weird dark goo um, that is is adhering to, to creatures. Yeah, creatures, yeah. It's falling from the sky. And oh, that, that, that's their saw, leader. You saw, you saw their leader for two seconds here. It's our, like... Evil goo emperor. Um, so, so yeah. So essentially, when a sea creature gets this goo on them, they go evil and try to kill everything around them, uh, but still seem to kind of retain their intelligence in some way. So, uh, so yeah. So you're basically trying to save. You just let a whole bunch of people here. Yeah, we're uh, we're, we're, we're rescuing the population of the city. So our our objective here is to survive for eight turns. So uh, sure are a lot of enemies over there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Every turn adds new enemies, but as we know, enemies only attack if they're in range. 
So one guy does spawn right in front of me. I do have to actually take him out. But that's not too difficult. I'm also going to pick up this chest, which has a very useful helmet for later. And I should... Ah, darn. I was. If you're really right next to the chest, uh, you're safe. But I was not, apparently. I might actually die. Hopefully no one else sees me. We should be okay. Okay. So I'm just going to take this guy out. Uh, I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm going to stand here. This should be fine. I'm going to get myself into the corner a little bit. Okay, there we go. That was a little less clean. If you're closer to the chest, they just don't yeah, see they just you. Yeah, they don't spot you. Have, That's fine. Yeah, it's instant. We did it. We saved everyone. So to celebrate, we're playing a game of King of the Hill on this turtle. <laughs> so I'm just going to murder my party members. That's actually what's happening. We're just knocking them off. Samo's the only squid that uh, that doesn't use his tentacles to fling himself. He uses his undergarments. <laughs> his underwear. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, so you, you can't actually damage your allies here. Like you see, I'm not dealing any damage when I hit them. But if you use consumable items, you can actually just murder your whole party too. That also works. They uh, they do though. It, they don't stay dead. So, uh, no. so they they magically revive. The, uh, if, if you ever lose any characters, they're all back uh, for the next the next round. All right, that's everyone. Hooray! Meanwhile. Hey, Winnick's still alive. So there's some pretty hilarious cutscenes in this that we're, of course, all skipping. So Winnick, uh, earlier in the game, this is our, like, uh, Anakin Skywalker equivalent guy here. Uh, he, like, sacrifices himself and kind of, like, stays behind to fend them off. Uh, but it's clear throughout the cutscene that there's just no one around when they're loading them all on this turtle. Uh, and turtles, apparently, are a very quick way to move. So, I don't know. He could have just hopped on and all would have been fun. But uh, no luck. And Winnick is part scout, so Steve learned from the best. This is the strategy of skipping levels. Uh, so this is the exact same level we just did as Winnick now in the present, and you can see there's like black ooze everywhere. It's been corrupted. Uh, so we're, we're here to search for Winnick again. Yes, they've gone back because uh, they're hoping to save Winnick. Also, sea urchins, not actually impassable. We'll just apply our face. Okay, that was really good. I went right through those anchors there. You just la latch onto an anchor if you go near one. Which is useful casually. You can't get knocked back if you're holding onto one. Alright, so I'm going to use my first consumable item here. I'm going to open up my inventory and use a sushi that I got earlier, which just gives me the red stamina bar. This level is very treacherous otherwise. Uh, but yeah, as we were explaining earlier, the category, I'm not allowed to purchase any consumable items. I'm only allowed to use the ones that I find because they're super, super broken and... We basically would never level up anyone ever and just yeah, spam just consumables every stage. <laughs> yeah, and that's no Krakens the whole time. So this is a very deadly bridge. Yeah, it really is. Okay, that was perfect. I knocked that guy out of the way using the other guy, so we can get right to the exit. So you can see that that's the evil, like, dark <laughs> Sith Lord Baron. equivalent dude. Yeah. Baron, yeah. I He's was supposed to menu. Whoops, a doodle. Okay, that's fine. Menuing. So uh, I'm going to add Steve back to my party. Uh, I'm going to buy some scout hats. That I can equip to both my scouts simultaneously, because again, that's how hats work. So you can see there, so da the dashes is the bottom one there. So uh, Pono uh, will keep gaining dashes as he levels. Yeah. We're going to get him to level 19, which is where you're going to pick up his seventh dash. I have exactly amazing. enough money to do that. Whereas Steve stays at four, I believe. Yeah, the Steve just yeah. never gets any more dashes. So, uh, so yeah, so... Um, okay, hopefully I can hit this first guy. Perfect. <laughs> so, Capono is extremely overleveled right now. Uh, Steve is, like, moderately leveled, I guess. Uh, but he does enough damage. So, he, Steve is not going to get sucked into that current. He's going to deal with these guys over here. Uh, note, he deals 24 damage. They have exactly 24 health, these guys. So, it's indented. So, this guy's going to hit us, but that's fine. Enemies get turns. What? I know, right? <laughs> I forgot about that. That hardly <laughs> seems fair. <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, I was mentioning at one point about the double bounces. You'll see a, a number underneath them, like, so plus 10. Uh, that's the, the number of bonus pearls that uh, that uh, are awarded by getting a double bounce or, or, or higher. So, yeah. like, uh, triple bounces and super bounces award more. Uh, and those uh, pearls are the currency in this game. So buying hats, buying levels, those are all pearl-based things. Yeah. So it's actually important to get sufficient numbers of double bounces and stuff throughout the as we go. So this is the first boss, the Guardian. Uh, ideally, I want to just like do one like seven hit attack, but his hitbox is super wonky. So yeah, 
Yeah, I'm settling for doubles here. Uh, okay, that was not bad. That was actually a pretty bad turn. Yeah, honestly. that was. I've I've seen that been done a lot cleaner. <laughs> so that's that, fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna do this a little carefully. We'll see. No, that was bad. No. Oh, well. So hopefully he doesn't kill us here. He can knock you off the edge with this attack that he's doing. Uh, but okay, we're fine. Now he's gonna throw some sea urchins. So sea urchins deal percent HP damage. So it doesn't matter how over leveled you are, they, they're always gonna hurt. Uh, and that doesn't look too scary, but after a couple of turns of this, this gets really hairy. But hopefully he should not be getting another turn. Yeah, you can see his light's pretty low at this point. So that's one eye, this is two eyes, and now there's his head, which has 60 health, which is going to go down pretty quick. Alright, and that's chapter one. Woo. So that's the longest of all the chapters. Yeah. Um, yeah, the rest are much quicker. Skip some cutscenes there. Nothing important happened. We didn't just find out that Winnick has turned evil or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has now gone from Anakin to Vader. All right, so now we're in the Wild West. Uh, we've come here to, to search for more squids. If you listen carefully, you can hear there's two music tracks playing because I like glitched the music by entering this world too fast. We have the menu and also the like the level music. That'll go away at the end of this level, though. So as, as we kind of explore this Wild West world, uh, you'll uh, yeah you'll see Clint a lot more. That's the uh, the <laughs> yeah this is the his shooter home, home town. Yeah, he's a sheriff the or former sheriff. So yeah, again, defeat all enemies. Not true. We just need to defeat this one guy. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and kill him quickly. Again, triple bounces are hard sometimes. And that this enemy can only be hurt from one angle. Yeah. To the saloon. Yeah. So uh, so Clint, just to keep using my little metaphor here, he's like. Our hand solo equivalent here, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to the <laughs> saloon, which is actually a pinball machine. The squids in this game are actually really tiny if you pay attention to like background elements, but this is actually a pinball machine, as you can see. So I don't know. It's kind of neat. Totally so makes sense from the saloon door perspective. Yeah. Uh, so this is Jane. We're rescuing her, but she can actually take care of herself. She's a sassy cowgirl who, yeah, doesn't need any help. So she picked up a, uh, a salmon there, actually. You can tell because she, like, annihilated that guy in one turn. Normally it takes two turns. She actually picks up a power-up on the way. And it's actually, like, a random power-up. Which is kind of neat. I'm gonna grab this chest for safety. It has a revive item that I might use later. Alrighty. So, some menu time here. I'm going to recruit Clint uh, and recruit Venus. And I'm going to buy some shooter helmets and some healer helmets, which seems odd, but uh, since we don't use any of those classes. But the game is going to force us to use some uh, certain people in certain levels, so. So you can see, yeah, uh, you can have uh, two people on, on, on the same screen when leveling up. You could level up here, but there's another way you can kind of like double level up. So, uh, so that's why you saw uh, in that, that uh, equipping menu the, the, the double level up thing going on. Yeah, it's a lot slower. Like, if you see they're doing, like, this little dance every time you equip a hat, that they do that same thing when you level them up on this screen as well. So leveling them up on the, the compare squids screen is a little it's quicker. strictly better. Yeah. But anyway, so we've leveled up everyone we need so that we should be able to survive all the uh, upcoming missions where we're forced to use certain people. Okay. So continuing the Wild West, we have dynamites. Always a must. Yeah. Also, for whatever reason, Steve is first in your party in this level. Again, it's, it's starting to like force party members, so this is always Steve and whoever else is in your party. So Steve, Capono's usually first, but Steve goes first there. For whatever reason. Uh, I'm gonna just grab the Secret Star. I, you could skip this one. But the Secret Star is just worth 300 pearls every time you grab them, so I'm just gonna grab them for safety. Might as well. Only takes a second. Lol. Like, I spawned right on top of the shell. <laughs> like, a 30 pearls for it. <laughs> so this level, uh, Steve is going to barricade all the exits to the town. So this is supposed to be a bit of a novelty where Steve, it's a solo Steve level, and you're supposed to avoid all the enemies and, like, hit all the switches in secret. But, you know, that this doesn't look any different for us because we've been doing this, like, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but... So I'm going to pass the turn here because there's no enemies around. Go past that guy. Yeah, so bizarre here. How different. Yeah, Ooh, right? Sneaking around. Not fighting here. enemies. 
pass. So I'm just passing the turn again when there's no enemies around so that they don't aggro me. And the town is secured. So meanwhile, while Steve is doing that, the rest of the party is buying him time. Mm -hmm. So now we have some missions with the three shooters. Uh, so this mission is tough. We didn't level up any of our shooters except for Clint, who we put to level four, which is still pretty low, actually. So they deal enough damage, but they're they're all quite fragile. If I end up passing the turn, the, they can all die very, very quickly. So part of the thing with the, the helmets, uh, why you can kind of, uh, why the power-up remains after you equip it once is that you can pick any hat that you want and kind of... Yeah, cosmetically, you can equip yeah. whatever hat you want. So, that was uh, a nice little double bounce there to finish that guy off. He had one HP left, and we'd deal the extra one damage. You can see that uh, Clint is rocking a lovely uh, floral hat. Yeah, he's, wear <laughs> he's wearing Jane's helmet. <laughs> so Vesper there, we're sending her to get a really uh, useful item, another Kraken from up there. So uh, I'm actually just going to hide here. I'm going to use some hit and run tactics, because again, these guys are not very strong right now. Jane's going to go in and probably do the same thing. So he's making use of the shoot ability here. Yeah. So that he's got uh, some extra some movement. People running away. I could commit to that by like going for that power-up and praying that it's like a useful item, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so Vesper here picks up another Kraken, which is going to be useful later. I'm not going to bother getting her out of there, because it's a nightmare trying to get her out. Okay, so I should be able to commit now. It'll be okay. So there's a secret star there, which can refresh my stamina. Uh, which I'm going to say for Jane. So we haven't really explained any of the enemies here, uh, just because we're killing them all so quick. Um, so yeah, so that small crab that just died there is it can fling itself. This larger one has the same sort of ability. There was a hermit crab looking thing and a weird... Oh, that was um, dumb of me. Okay. Oh, well, that's fine. Oh, yeah, that was... Uh, so the safest place to be near those crabs is actually right next to them, because if you're right next to them, they'll ground pound and then do nothing else with their turn. Otherwise, they'll like move, attack you sometimes multiple times, and then ground pound. Yeah. So it's not too bad just being right next to them. The uh, the hermit crab with the kind of twirly shell is also a shooter, so it can. Uh, that was why uh, that was kind of prioritized in the first group of three there. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, in this in this fight, in theory, supposedly the the, the text is framed in a way that that Samu is uh, he's big, tanky. He's the guy who uses his jock strap to fling him around. He's supposedly with the two healers, and it's just a survive uh, objective. But uh, we haven't leveled up him at all, and have no have equipped no hats. So the healers haven't been leveled up, but have had multiple hats mm, equipped. I have done goofed this slightly. Okay. So um, the healers end up being stronger. So uh, so instead of healing Okay, we're fine, I think. Samu, we're, uh, the healers are going to be the main uh, the main two here. Yeah, Samu dies in one hit. The healers can survive a little bit. They can, in theory, they can survive two hits from anything in this stage. I've leveled, I've equipped just enough hats so that they can do that. This is also the level, if I'm not mistaken, that has uh, every single item here is a, is one of the margarita mix things. Yeah. So the, the glass jars, which are normally random power-ups, are always cocktails here, and which is rather useful. The cocktails, of course, yeah, refresh the energy bar of these these characters. So that's... Um, so I can just... So there you go. It's refreshed. Yeah. And so he can just kind of keep pounding this guy into the corner here, which is great. Okay, next wave. There's four waves of enemies in this stage, though, which is a lot. So we're just going to work our way through it slowly. So I ideally, I want to deal with this big guy, because he's the da most dangerous but I don't think I have the stamina for it, so... We'll just, again, we'll get right next to him, which is the safest place. Where he just ground pounds and doesn't do anything else. Then the rest of them are too far away to hit me. So the way damage is calculated is, is, assuming you're going sufficiently fast, you deal damage equal to your attack minus their defense, which is the same, like, and vice versa. Uh, but if you're too far away, you just deal, like, some percentage of that down to a minimum of one. I'm gonna hide over here. So there, look, for instance, there's a one damage attack there. It's too slow. I should not have finished that guy off, probably. Yeah. Okay, we'll see what happens here. be fine. Oh, but he might go down. She might not. I guess that third, yeah, that third guy is just, like, unable to see because there's guys in the way. Okay, this is fine. This is the final wave of this. Yeah, this should be. Oh, yeah. Just finish this guy off. I'm not even bothering to healing. The cocktails also heal you slightly, too, so I've been just using those. Yeah, again, the, the, the two characters we're using here are healers, so if they were flung at one another, 
they did heal, 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 but yeah. um, okay. we're not doing that. So yeah, that's I guess, I guess sort of a glimpse of what the game more looks like casually. It's like very slow. You gotta hit a lot, etc. Anyways, uh, now yeah. we're chasing the seahorse. Because again, Wild West, we need horses or seahorses, I guess. Ha 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 ha. Uh, the secret is you just hit that switch, which op opens up a shortcut. Every turn you pass, the seahorse gets further and further away until eventually the level ends when you don't catch him. Uh, but with that shortcut, it's pretty easy to get him. I thought I had a dash there. I should have just flung at him. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. So seahorses let you, in addition to kind of moving with seahorses, uh, they can deal damage to enemies that you can't sometimes damage. Yeah, like these guys. Also, the music glitch again, because we're at the start of a new chapter. We entered it too quickly, so we have two two music tracks playing. Yeah, so these armadillo turtle things. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dashed out of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these save. armadillo turtle things can't uh, take damage from, from units, only from... Um, only from horses. Uh, horses, the horses. So uh, that's why we're, you're seeing uh, them being knocked off the cliff here. That's the only option. Fortunately, scouts are very good at that, too. Yeah, yeah. What with no. their 100 bajillion... Dashes. Dashes. It's pretty easy to uh, fling and knock off. Yeah, we go to the exit. Okay. Finally, that music ended. <laughs> so now we have a level with seahorses where we can see. Uh, yes. So they will flip over the armadillos. So you can see at the bottom there that the seahorse's two movement. Uh, if you fully use the seahorse's two movement, um, uh, it ends your turn, but if you hop off immediately before the end of the charge, then you can move as normal. Yeah. So you can see that's that's what's been done here. We kind of moved, you know. Yeah, we got one point two attacks times. in. Yeah, yeah. got the, the yeah sure that's a good way to put it. The one point <laughs> nine attacks. <laughs> yeah, hopped off the last Ow, second. Did he really die? Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, that okay. Um, do I do this? Yeah, I'll just do this with Steve. So it's somewhat annoying because you actually get, um, at the end of every level, there's three awards. You get an award for finding the secret star, you get an award for having all your squids survive, and you get an award for uh, finishing the level quickly enough in, a, in a few, as few turns as possible. So by having a squid die, we lose 300 pearls, uh, which is somewhat annoying. It should be fine. I did pick up an extra secret star in a little while ago. So, so there you go. The safety star was a good call. Yeah. <laughs> Reach the camp? That doesn't sound like combat. Well then. I will just headbutt my way into a bunch of sea urchins. Yeah, they're much better at naming the objectives of the level later on. Uh, a in, bit. in the first chapter, uh, everything says defeat the enemies, but really it's just <laughs> get true. to a certain point. Defeat one guy and then get somewhere. Uh, so, blow past everyone. Uh, so story-wise, uh, Jane, we found Jane in the saloon. She's leading us to where the ooze, the ooze is leaking in this area as well. So she's leading us. She's led us to the native camp because we need cowboys and Indians, as well, apparently. Because again, Wild West. Uh, so I hit that guy into the portal. Um, that's actually intended. Uh, we're gonna finish him off with one of these cannons. So yeah, there's there's two new items that we see oh, no. in this level that really? appear later on. Ooh, that okay. sucks. Um, so yeah, you've got these kind of whirlpool-looking portals that are are linked to another end, and going into them teleports you. Uh, and the other item is these fish. These shoot a ball, and boom! Look at that. Perfect so the, example. Yeah. So the next wave spawns, and then I can just hit this cannon a second time, which finishes that guy. So that works out really nicely. Uh, so Steve has much less stamina than Capono, so I'm gonna do this a little carefully. Although I would get the star either way, I guess. Yeah, he has fewer dashes and less stamina. Yeah. So, I guess, uh, so if you pull back a squid as far as they can possibly go, that consumes 25 stamina. And Steve has 50, and Capono has about, like, 80, I think. So Capono has, like, a full extra move, just like normally. Okay. So I'm going to knock this guy off the edge rather than go around him. Yeah, Steve has much less damage, too. Funny, that's a bit tricky. Okay, that's good. Right, okay. So we have another seahorse chasing level here. Uh, the leader of the native tribe is uh, gonna as, uh, is gonna join our team if we can catch the, the black seahorse before he does. But of course, since we have many, many dashes, this is gonna be useful. Yeah. 
Uh, the trick here is actually knowing where the secret star is, because the secret star refreshes your stamina, so it's right there. Which gives us enough stamina to get there in one turn. Also, you might think I would face plant into those sea urchins to get them out of the way, but those ones are filled with concrete, so they just don't move. Well, they move just, like, very, very slowly, so... You actually just can't do it. But there we go. There you go. Turn one. So Steve is now the spirit of the West, and the, the natives will follow us into battle. Or into skipping battle, I guess. Reach the south of the plains? But how could we possibly fight our way through all these enemies? Whee! <laughs> Shuriken there is kind of unfortunate, it wastes a bunch of time, but not the end of the world. All right. So now we have some side story with Clint here. Uh, so this is Clint's rival, Cleef, because Clint is a former sheriff and the town ain't big enough for the two of them or something. Again, Wild West. Uh, so I'm just going to hide in the corner. Clint is, again, level four and has, like, no equipment. Uh, so here comes Cleef. He's going to hit us for one damage and then 23 damage. And I have one HP left, which is, again, intended, I guess. That's why I equipped all those hats and got him to level four. But now he's conveniently right next to this edge, so I can just knock him off. Rip and pepperonis. Leaf is like our Boba Fett. He keeps hunting. <laughs> okay, time to level up. I'm going to upgrade my seahorse. Uh, I'm going to buy some hats. Also, Ronimo joined our party, the, the leader of the natives. He's also a scout, and we could add him to our party and equip all these hats to him, but that takes a bunch of time, and we're just not going to do it. So Steve is going to be under leveled here. Use the comparison to level up again. So we're gonna, get, yeah. You can normally get Steve to level 14 there, but that's not a big deal. We're mostly using Capono anyways. So yeah, Capono. You, you saw uh, we leveled him up uh, to get his eighth and final dash. Yep. So he now has eight dashes. That's the most any character can have. The next closest is four with uh, with Steve. Uh, so these red enemies, after they move, they will explode. Uh, so rather than knock myself off the edge, I can just grab these anchors and let them explode themselves. Which is a little bit easier in a lot of cases. They're, like, awkwardly placed. So same thing here. Grab anchors. We have enough HP that we can tank this. One wave left, so I just need to kill the one guy who doesn't explode. Okay. So we're descending into a mine here. We're on an elevator shaft going down, which is where the ooze is leaking from. While that container looks filled with pearls, you are not allowed to take them somehow. Nope, and, you are not. Uh, and spend them. Pearls, also, the currency again. So this is Brad. He's uh, causing the ooze to leak by mining. We're supposed to catch up to him. Uh, to do that, you're supposed to defeat all the enemies on the screen. But we can actually just face plant into the sea urchin, and there's just enough room to sneak on past. And that's off. Uh-oh. Uh, no, we're fine. Okay. <laughs> hey, Brad. Boom. Going? <laughs> so we can basically skip that whole level. And of course, after knocking into the shameless profiteer who's mining and causing oil leakage, he suddenly joins your party. Well, not yet. He's currently he's an enemy right now. Also, uh, Winnick is evil. Ah, gasp. We're so shocked. <laughs> so I'm going to try and kill him in one hit here, uh, which will skip his second phase if I can do it. So his, his second nah, I missed phase, one attack. Or I missed two attacks, actually. This is a really annoying second phase. Yeah. Um, because it's, uh, it's possible that the attack just misses full stop. Oh, I'm out of dashes. Okay, we so, need to see that. Uh, so yeah, so this can't be problematic. See, like there that. you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just random, in this phase, he will just randomly dodge attacks, which is why we want to skip it. But so, yeah. If you yeah. get bad RNG, that's uh, horrible. But, uh, but no, worked out nicely. Still... Didn't kill him in one hit, but uh, but yeah, still still worked out nicely. Yeah, so Winnick was of course a load-bearing boss, and now this mine is collapsing. So Capono can clean this up. No, Capono is starting to like struggle to kill enemies. Like that, the big crabs are taking four hits. Uh, Capono's starting to like fall off a little bit. We're like three quarters of the way through the game. And Capone's basically max level, uh, but he's starting to 
struggle a little bit, but he still has like eight dashes, so it's fine. So that's the end of the mine. We can escape. Uh, I did not mean to go into this level, so I just entered a bonus level instead of going to the next chapter by just mashing. Anyways. Oh, I got the menu glitch again, or the, the music thing. Ah, oh, the worst. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, story-wise, Steve is distraught that uh, Winnick has turned evil, so he wants to return to the, the capital, where which has been taken over by the Ooze, and confront Winnick. He wants to perform the full Vader. Yes. Um, and But this is basically a suicide mission, so Clint is going to the ranch where he grew up, where he buried a very powerful weapon to, to give to Steve, so that Steve has a chance. Uh, so fortunately, there's no enemies in this area because Clint is again level four. But at the end of this level, we have a, another showdown with Cleef, and Cleef at this point like kills us in one hit and gets four attacks per round, and we deal zero damage to him. So we're gonna have to get a little creative to defeat him. But we'll we'll see when we get there. Yes, you thought you knocked Cleef off the edge, but you forgot that it's an ocean. Yeah. And that knocking people off edges isn't Just actually doesn't lethal. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> All right, so here's Cleef. So I'm just going to open up the old inventory and use a Mighty Kraken, yeah, which, like again, reduces the HP of every enemy on the level to one. Which so. is very fair in Old West-style uh, <laughs> shootouts. Shoot <-outs. laughs> there you go. As soon as the Got tumbleweed him. at high noon goes yeah. back, you snap for your <laughs> Kraken. <laughs> so we only have two of those. That was one, which we used to just beat the side story with Clint so we don't have to level up Clint like 15 times or whatever and spend all that money. Uh, the second one we're going to save for the very final stage. Wow, really? Okay. <laughs> Angles. The worst. Now it's my bad. It's not a big deal, though. Fortunately, it's not the start of the level. This level is actually pretty long. Yeah, so this area, we need to get up to the top uh, right corner. And to do that, we need to defeat very certain, I guess, like you could say, load-bearing enemies. So this one shrimp I need to kill. Uh, I don't care about those other guys, because that opens up this passageway. Uh, casually, you, you literally just have to kill everything, because how, how are you supposed to know that like, any of these enemies are important? Yeah, but I'm going to send Steve over here, and now I just need to kill this one shrimp in the center. He's the next uh, enemy. The most important of the shrimp. So, what? Did I just... You killed the wrong one, maybe? No, I dismounted at the same time that the cutscene played, and I can't even get to the menu. I literally have to just, like, I've softlocked somehow? Okay. Oh, no. Never done that one before. That's never happened before. It actually hasn't. I've never done that before. <laughs> Guess we need to redo that one. Yeah, I dismounted the seahorse at the exact same time that the cutscene started, and then it just, like, softlocked, I guess. Wacky. All right, well. Now we can watch me murder this guy for the second time. That's... Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to hit myself there. This guy's probably in range of me now, yeah, which is going to be say, annoying. Yeah. I guess I can just smoke him. Alrighty. So yeah, so again, mounting the seahorse. We only need to take out the guy in the middle. So that's what we're doing. So let's try this again. Okay, I will not press anything until this <laughs> completes. Now we'll get off the seahorse, pick up the star, and now I'm just going to throw Steve off the cliff because he's surrounded by enemies and there's no good way to get him out of it. So we just pick him off there. Like you do. Yeah. Being a good team player, jumping off the cliff. I did not mean to hit this guy, but uh, that's fine. The the enemy that I need to kill is this hermit crab here. So we finish him off, which opens up the next pass. And I'm going to grab this chest over here, which is going to be handy later. Another piece of salmon. Ooh, okay, don't die. That'd be nice. Yeah, see, that's the risk of flinging Steve off the cliff. Well, I'm actually going to revive him here, so I'm going to use uh, a tentacle, or a, what is it, a grappling hook? Yeah. This guy's in range, really? That guy usually doesn't see you. Well, I mean, as long as this level's being a train wreck, we might as well go, like, full, full on train wreck. Right. <laughs> Anyway, so we revive Steve just in case, because when we kill this next enemy, all this dynamite is going to explode. And if you're in range, which I am, uh, there's a chance that Capono just dies if he gets flung into the spikes. So, he didn't, which is fine. There's the finish. Hooray. <laughs> that level is usually not a problem. 
That, that did not go <laughs> Except well. Except when you get soft locked. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and fling yourself off the edge. Yeah. All right, so we came all this way for this cursed shell, which I just picked up, which is a helmet. Uh, it's a scout helmet, and it gives uh, five HP, six attacks, six defense, and an extra dash, which is, uh, which is ridiculously good. And remember, hats can be equipped to everyone, and yeah. the stat is permanent. So all of our scouts now get plus one, plus one dash, and a bajillion other stats. Also, we're escaping the ranch. Wow, that's like super unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> that's like ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Ninja right. stars. Okay. Uh, so our next chapter is Once Upon a Time in the Sea. I'm just gonna quit the game and restart it here real quick. No, no reason why. Don't, don't worry about it. All right. So our next chapter is Little Big Squid. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, why that works, but uh, if you just quit the game and relaunch it, you get to skip that chapter. So. Yeah, and that's that's a pretty key chapter to skip. Uh, because uh, story-wise, what happens there is uh, Steve, again, goes on his suicide mission to confront Winnick. Uh, he has his, like, you know, Vader Luke moment, and the whole temple collapses, and Steve has gone missing for the uh, for the rest of the game here. Uh, and, uh, and now the story kind of doesn't make sense, because uh, the folks are kind of, like, trying to find Steve, but Steve's still in our party because we skipped the chapter that would remove him. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, you'll have some fun moments when um, when you basically have the party being like, "Where's Steve?" and Steve is standing right next to them. Yeah, so Steve is has, yeah, is supposed to leave our party permanently, uh, but he's still here, which is convenient because his stats are actually quite good. Um, so this level, I'm gonna kill this guy, and then I'm not gonna move at all. So this chest that you see on the left there, it's surrounded by a spawn trigger that's gonna cause like four enemies to spawn. Uh, but the objective here is to defeat all enemies, and if we never spawn those guys, we just don't have to defeat them. And this time when it says defeat all enemies, it means it Yeah, does. it does, actually. <laughs> um, so the whole level is sort of designed to get you to go over there, but, uh, you know, if you know that the spawn trigger's there, you can just avoid it. But yeah, so the current story is we're sneaking back into the capital to look for Steve, even though, you know, he's in our party. This level's actually quite treacherous. All the all the edges, that I'm gonna, you're going to see them in a second. Uh, these edges are all like more treacherous than they look. Uh, like the backgrounds in this game are really beautiful. They're all like painted or I'm not sure. But uh, they're like not super accurate, I guess. It's like unclear where the edge actually starts. So most of these edges are like less forgiving than they look. So I'm going to be a little careful here. Such appropriate music. Yeah. All right. So we sneak through the tunnels. So we don't. Steve is nowhere to be found, and instead we find uh, Magnus here, who is uh, like a gladiator arena fighter. And we're gonna rescue him now. Uh, so again, we're forced to use Magnus here, and we don't have anyone else in our party, which is actually quite unfortunate because Magnus isn't that strong. I mean, you have no opportunity to level him up before him before this, so like this is as strong as he's ever going to be, but uh, this level is like not trivial. It's, it's very easy to lose a lot of time. As you can see, Magnus dies like reasonably quickly to these guys. He has two ground pounds per turn, but he's still, he's like kind of fragile. Yeah, so again, I know we haven't used like any of the abilities. There are in theory different classes. We just keep using the scout because it's the best. Uh, it has the ability to kind of charge things. This guy, uh, yeah, ground pound. Hits everything in that area. Uh, he can do it twice. There's also a healer and a, 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 a shooter. Third guy's out of range, but that's okay. I do have a turtle shell, so this should be okay. So, so yeah, you're sort of at the mercy of power-ups here. Like getting good power-ups can help you a lot, save a lot of time, or lose a lot of time. So we have a seahorse. Uh, I'm gonna hit this dynamite with my seahorse and bounce off. Seahorses, yeah, that reminds me. Seahorses move a little differently. They have a yeah, they have this weird charge yeah. up thing. So, uh, so unlike unlike other like uh, squids, which you could just drag to the full extent and, and flick. I'm gonna run away. Seahorses kind of pulsate. You want to maximize the um, the area for them to go farthest. So I didn't like my spot there. The seahorse was kind of blocking the path to those five power ups in the corner, which would have been rather handy to get. So I'm just gonna go around and try and get some good power ups here. Okay, got a turtle shell, which is really good. Means I can commit. Although I don't have any stamina left. I got zero stamina potions there. Okay. 
We got a red bar and we got full healed, which is good. And so we knock that enemy into the portal, which is actually bad because it means I need to go all the way back. And that's just like how you lose all the time in this level. Just these these three last guys are troublesome. And, and that happens a fair bit. The uh, the guy going through the portal. That's uh, yeah. It's hard an easier to avoid. thing to occur. But not the end of the world. Yeah. And there's no turn limit here, so <laughs> we can just pass as many times as we want. So we're gonna get close to this guy. He can't fit through this tunnel, so I should be safe here. And then uh, finish him off. This guy will mess you up. If you if you pass the turn, he'll like kill you in one turn. But we should go down. Alright. So now we're looking, we're hunting for a treasure map. The story sort of, oh no, it's this mission first, Never mind. So this mission, I'm gonna use another consumable item, the salmon again, to get a red salmon bar. So all four of our squids are locked in different rooms like this one with Capono filled with enemies. So if we pass the turn with Capono, we have to wait for everyone else to die basically, which takes forever. And this guy is not cooperating. I just need to kill the one, this one guy that I'm hitting because that opens up the passageway. And the other guy I didn't actually care about, but he did not feel like playing nice. So hopefully I can get this done in one turn. I'm sort of a bit low on stamina right now. So ideally you'd hit that crab into the switch, but it's actually pretty tough to do. We can just hit it with Kabuna. So there's the exit. Let's see if we can get over there with two dashes and like three stamina bars. You can do it. Yeah. Well, this is why we got the red bar. Yeah, that's good. Phew, boom. <laughs> so yeah, it's a huge time save, as, as was mentioned. Everyone in all of the rooms would be attacked otherwise, and that just would take forever. Yeah. So now we're here hunting for a treasure map with Venus and Vesper. Fortunately, no enemies, because these uh, ladies are not very high level. Also, the camera spazzes out there for whatever reason. This has my favorite music in the game. I really like this track. I'm gonna go out of my way to pick up some power-ups here, some salmon for later. Ugh, <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. So Venus is gonna grab the switch. It's a little, it's not really a puzzle, it's just a little bit of an obstacle course where you need to hit a bunch of switches. Now Vesper here actually has a little bit more stamina, so she's gonna go do the final section, which is over here. While Venus hits switches. So the only real tiny optimization you can do here is you want to pass the turn when they're close by each other because uh, then the camera pans less far. So I, I'm going to need to pass one more time with Vesper here, and I'm going to do it when they're like right next to each other through the wall. So I'm just going to pass right here because the camera doesn't have to pan over. Ow. <laughs> hey, the treasure map. The map. Okay. So now we just have the final chapter. I'm just going to level up Steve. Again. Hopefully we ha can get him to level 25. I missed a couple of stars. Yeah, we're good. Steve, Perfect. who is supposedly gone. Yeah. <laughs> but we still have him. We do. So this final chapter here uh, has some new enemies. So it has the, the crabs and the shrimp. Uh, the shrimp have 150 attack in this area, which will one-shot either of our squids. They only get one move per turn, though. They have very little stamina. Uh, and then there's the hermit crabs and the large crabs, and they have 65 armor. Uh, and Capono has uh, 64 attack right now. So Capono cannot damage these guys. He deals one damage always. Uh, Steve has like 80 something attack. So uh, that's why we've. That's the main reason why we've leveled up Steve at all, really, and not just used Capono this whole game. Is uh, for this mission here. Or for this world, rather. Um, yeah. And it's not that Capono is like under leveled or anything. Capono is basically max level. This is like you're starting to see like the weakness of Capono is that his his attack is actually quite low, and he's starting to fall off. But again, he still has yeah, he eight still dashes, just moves super or nine far. dashes because yeah. he's got the bonus from the helmet. So uh, so he can knock things off edges, and uh, that's still really really good. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of post game in this uh, in this game. And, uh, yeah, enemies start having, like, ludicrous sums of armor, and Capono starts to struggle a little bit. But we're not going to see that in this run, since we're doing 80%. So 
So we pick up that last salmon. Where I'm stock been stockpiling like power ups all game, which we're gonna start unloading in this final chapter. There's only like four missions left. There you go. Not your typical JRPG where you end the game with all the power ups. <laughs> Uh, so this stage, enemies are going to spawn for the first three turns, no matter what I do. So I'm just going to pa- like, I'm going to kill the guys near me so that I don't die. Uh, and then I'm just going to let everything spawn and then go and mop up everything. So this, um, so there's another character that kind of joins your party after at the, after this uh, round. Yeah, there's this, this NPC this, here. this, like, monk dude here. Uh, and he's the only other, uh, so we, we mentioned that Winnick was cross-classed and had two kind of power, power uh, abilities. Uh, it's the same with this this monk guy. So he he also is too. He is both a healer, uh, and what's his other one? He's a scout as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, right. he's part scout, part healer. And he's yeah. level 28, so you'd think he'd be super useful, but again, it's just like not worth the time to equip all the hats to him and do everything. There's only like three missions left, so really don't need to. Eh. I am not happy that I have the red stamina bar here. This is <laughs> making me a bit nervous. We should be okay. Wow, that was, yeah, it was a little tight. Yeah. So I want to hit this cannon, because uh, cannons deal percent HP damage. So these guys, no matter how much armor they have, uh, they will always take full damage from this. Ideally, I'd get a third shot off, but I've, I've run out of stamina. So Steve's going to have to clean this up, which is fine. Okay, Salmon is actually quite nice here for Steve. But he's going to need to get a bunch of hits in. Damn, he lived. Yeah. Got this round. That's time. fine. So Octoku's just going to clean this up. His name is Octoku, this guy. When I first played this game casually, I like skipped the cutscene and didn't realize he was an ally and just like immediately killed him as soon as the mission started. But he's actually an ally. <laughs> you still get him afterwards. He's a very forgiving monk. <laughs> Alright, so another just level filled with... Uh, enemies here. Um, uh, there's some more crabs in this level. Ideally, I don't want to use Steve, though. I'm going to try and knock them all off with uh, Capono. It'll save a little bit of time if you do it correctly. But it's easier said than done. All right. So I'm going to start using power-ups. I'm going to use uh, some salmon just to give myself some knockback power so I can actually try and knock this guy off the edge. Or Capono oh, could die. That's cool. Die. Fortunately, I have a couple of extra revives, so I can do that. So I'm just going to revive Kapono here. Uh, so Steve, I don't want to send him in because uh, the exit is going to spawn right, basically right where Steve is standing. So if we can avoid sending him in, we can save a little bit of time. I guess I could have left Kapono up there yeah, and used Steve, just, maybe. That, but Kapono, so. Steve just has so little stamina that it's actually really annoying. This should be fine. Ah, not hard enough, eh? Yeah, it's actually very rare that you don't deal one damage. Like you, you can if you're if you like, if you're going at sufficient speed, you deal your full damage, and if you're not going fast enough, you deal like some percentage down to like a minimum of one. And it's like very hard to deal non-one amounts of damage. I'm actually out of stamina, so I'm gonna use a power up again, I guess. So uh, that's why we bought them, I yeah. guess. Or or didn't buy them. That's yeah. why we found them. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get on the seahorse, and he's gonna just kill the seahorse in one hit, which is fine. That'll work. Yes, in theory, enemies do have turns. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they just only attack if you're in range, so. But yeah, that guy would have one shot him. Would have one shot Capono if he actually hit Capono. Fortunately, the horses take damage for you. Okay, so there's only one enemy left, and this this guy has 90 armor, so not even Steve can damage him, so we just have to knock him off the cliff, or use power-ups or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to use my last salmon here. So he took 80 damage because I hit him into a sea urchin, so you could also hit him into sea urchins repeatedly, they deal percent HP damage, but that's like just as hard as knocking him off, I guess, so. Eh. Got him. There he goes. Okay. And here comes the end. All right. So, the final mission here, uh, there's no boss, it's just a room filled with a huge amount of enemies that we have to defeat. Uh, so we're going to use our last mighty Kraken here. 
Shuriken's unfortunate, but that's okay. So just to kind of remind, Kraken reduces everything to one HP. Yeah. Everything in the whole level, so. Cool. And now I can just I start using Shurikens. Shurikens kill the closest three enemies. Or they deal damage to the closest three enemies, which is killing things here. Yeah. So armor, ha, huh, who cares? Yeah. And of course, Kapono deals minimum one damage to everything, so everything has one HP, so Kapono's good. Purposely throw him off the cliff here so I can revive him down here, so, which is slightly faster than moving. And yeah, we have the power-ups anyways, so... The section with Steve's a little bit tight on Semna, but it's usually okay. But basically, you don't want to hit this guy too hard, because if you hit him into the dynamite, Steve will probably die. Okay. It's close, but fine. Okay. Secret star. So yeah, we're just gonna go through and mop up everything. There are a couple of enemies that have, uh, like, spawn triggers uh, that I'm deliberately avoiding. Uh, so there's like eight or nine enemies throughout this whole level that we're actually skipping by like not sending squids into certain areas. Uh, which we're, yeah, it's just a minor thing. You don't really see it, I guess. Yeah, okay. So Kabono is gonna mop up these guys down here and see if we can finish up. Again, usually this would be much harder, <laughs> but uh, when they the have Kraken, armor and stuff, the Kraken makes life super easy. Yeah. Okay, so if I uh, hit this guy, use my last shuriken here, then I'm going to use my last power-up, which is a homing jellyfish that I picked up earlier, uh, to hit a switch, because the switch is surrounded by a spawn trigger, and I don't want to uh, send a squid over there to finish off those last guys. And that is time. Did I hit it? No, I don't think you did. Eh. You suck eh. at those. <laughs> you do it. Okay. <laughs> eh. No, that didn't it's, work. It's possible. Oh, no. They unplugged it. Oh, the worst. <laughs> we can't end the run. Well, in theory, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much perfectly an hour before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, before I play the final cutscene, I'm just going to swap the order of the party members. So Squid is, uh, so Steve is in the front. So what we're doing here is uh, we've come all the way out east here to, to commune with the dead, to speak with Steve. Uh, but we can't channel Steve's spirit for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because he's standing right there. I don't know. <laughs> Steve is alive. Like, yes, guys, he's right there. Come on. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the end of the game. And that's uh, that's Squid's Odyssey. So, yeah, the game so. yeah, is done. Uh, the, the button was, is <laughs> we, we already tried. tried. Time was, was like oh, a minute ago. Oh, but okay. Oh, now it worked. Cool. <laughs> oh, we tried, we tried earlier. Anyways. Okay. That's fine. Cheers. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you're interested in running this game, you can find me on the mobile speed gaming Discord. This is, I mean, is also a web or also a PC game, but uh, that's where you can find me. Uh, and yeah, thanks for having me. This event's always a lot of fun. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>